Before you watch the video, we kindly ask that you hit the like button. It costs you nothing, helps us a lot. On to the show. Super Duty Tough Work. Good morning, evening, afternoon to everyone, wherever you are, wherever you may be listening. We would like to welcome you to another uh, episode of The Great Adventures Blueprint and Logic. Two grown men just trying to live a good life, but obstacles, challenges, diabolical villains <laughs> <laughs> always seem to come their way. Yet, our two trusty heroes seem to always come out on top. And it is here where they document those adventures <laughs> on a weekly podcast called a Super Duty Tough Work. Logic, how you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. You know, um, as good as I can be. You know, it's been a it's been a challenging couple of weeks, um, and we'll I'll get into detail. We'll probably talk off off uh, off cam. Yes, sir. Yes, but, sir. But um, it's been um, it's been a challenging couple of weeks. I had to um, I had to listen to a couple old episodes. Um, mm. I've just been like, I just been uninspired. Haven't really been wanting to get into the studio. Yeah, yeah. You know, like just kind of just blah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but this weekend, um, starting yesterday, I kind of forced myself to get in. Yeah. Um, and you know, just first I cleaned up my studio. That helped. <laughs> that does one. <wonders, laughs> that shit does one. That do it every time for me. Every time. Cause it was a mess in here. Cause I hadn't been in here in a little mm -hmm. bit, and it was just shit all over the place, you know, just mad shit. Cause I, you know, I kind of moved my studio around once I got my um, synthesizers and stuff, and the boxes were still like yeah. on my on my table in the back. It was just a mess in here, so I didn't even it wasn't even inviting, mm. you know. So I cleaned it up, and um, I've been kind of getting myself in here. That's why I'm I was a little late this morning because I was in here till like. Two in the morning last hey. night. Yeah, he was uh, as, what they say, a burning the midnight oil, as they say, <laughs> as the old yeah, schoolers yeah. say. Yeah, but outside of that, you know, life is life is good. I can't complain too too much. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I've been in the studio a lot this last week too, just because my truck broke down and the motherfucker ain't had nothing else to do. So ah, <laughs> I just uh, all right. I guess I'll be hanging out in the studio all week. <laughs> you know, but yeah, like last week I put in the shop last. Tuesday before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and I knew I was like this could end up taking a minute because the holiday and yeah. the nature of what was wrong with the truck and uh, it's been that it's like parts gotta be mailed part got taken off my truck mailed to somebody to fix the people who got it said this ain't nothing wrong with this part he said it back they mail it back now we got the next part we ordered that ain't gonna be around till Monday all in all, it's been well over a week, you know, mm. you know, almost okay. almost two weeks. We'll be by the time I'm running again. But uh, so I just been hanging out in the studio, too, bro. Cleaning up has done wonders. Um, <laughs> yeah. The to do list. Uh, I just been doing busy work. Sometimes if I don't be inspired to make music, I just hang out here and do the busy work related to music. Yeah. The shit I hate yeah. doing. You know what I mean? Just yeah. do it in here. As opposed to in my real office. And, uh, but yeah, a lot of stuff going on, you know, uh, picked up my next record from duplication, as I told you the other day. Nice. And so, uh, we shifting gears, we shifting gears, man. Look, it's been, it's been a minute since your boy Print Nificence put out a record. It has been. Too has fucking been. long. And, you what, know. 28, 2018? 2018. Yeah, man. Five yeah. years. Five years. We'll be six by the time. You know, almost six by the time this record drops. And so, uh, you know, I'm getting back into album release mode, not album create mode, because, you know, a logic knows from our conversations and everything. Like, I've never stopped making music. Like, mm -hmm. every few months I pop up like, yeah, I just did a such and such record. I just did a blah, blah, blah. You know, he's like, damn, <laughs> when are you going to send me this shit? But I just been making music. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so I never stopped, but the music did stop coming out due to everything else going on. And and so as I get back into releasing music, one thing I've noticed, which is, you know, a perfect segue to this week's conversation, is that a lot has changed in the world in five years. A yeah. lot has changed for independent artists, particularly. And one thing that has affected uh, uh, independent artists is just the price of everything. Um. Uh, when I left uh, music, not left music, when I last put out music, you know, it was common to uh, sell vinyl for $20, CDs for 10 If you had tapes, they would be 10 You know, there was a point shit shortly before then, 45s was like $10, $5. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot has changed in, you know, uh, five years. And so <laughs> we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about, you know, why artists struggle to raise their prices. Why this happens. And I know I'm not the only one struggling with this because I've been struggling with this, kicking it around the new reality of prices and what that means to everybody on all sides of it. And so we're going to talk about it today. And hopefully some of you artists out there who are going through the same thing, having the same struggles, wondering how to price your 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 products um, can get something out of this episode. So uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Work. We got you stuck off the realness. The most infamous, you heard of us. Official podcast murderers. The show comes equipped with few points to share. Grown man ideas for all those who care and want to grow. So go ahead and download every single week with a brand new episode. You're not alone in this world, cousin. So we share information and honest discussion and keep repping a culture like we supposed to. They spread gossip, but they never come close to. I can hear it inside their tone. They talk about the industry but never left their home you get laced up with bullet points and such plus empowering topics that they never would touch you can put your whole network against the team but super duty tough works the mvp most valuable podcast on mp3 priceless info but all of it's free so take these words home and think them through super duty tough work is coming at you now listening to Super Duty Tough Work with your host, Blueprint, raw and uncut, adult conversations, no shucking, no jiving, and no bullshit. All right, folks, we back. Super Duty Tough Work, Blueprint, Logic. This week, we're talking about why artists struggle to raise the prices. You know, just to give everybody even more background, there's there's obviously we had, you know, 2018, 2019, everything was going great. You know, we, we had a, a damn pandemic that shut everything down. Supply chains were disrupted. Uh, vinyl in particular was disrupted for us. Um, and that was kind of one of my biggest issues is that, you know, it went from me taking like because I go I go I go to a local place here in Columbus. Most people know to get my vinyl pressed and their average turnaround was about 10 weeks in 2018, 2019, two and a half months. That shit is beautiful. And, uh, from 2020 on until recently, it was 11 to 12 months, sometimes more for depending on when you ordered, you know? And so, uh, that kind of changed everything as well as the, the delays in, in the manufacturing come price increases. Um, you see price increases on all sides and I'm sure you're probably seeing this as too logic. You know, we, we mentioned this as well, just like, okay, well, we used to be able to record this on zoom for free. Yep. In the last year, zoom has now made it to where if you're recording over 40 minutes or 45 minutes, what 10, 20 bucks a month, you got to pay now, Yep. you know, and that's just one service, just one. I, if I were to show everybody my monthly charges just to run a, a music label, they'd be like, damn. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's a real bill. Yeah, just the website alone. Dog, you got hosting. You got uh, domain names, multiple domain names. You got uh, you got cloud storage. You got mm-hmm. at least five to ten apps. You got apps that your e-commerce apps. You got it's it's just the list goes on. Hundreds a month get spent on just like 
monthly charges. And what I've noticed over the last three to five years is like everybody's going up in prices. Mm -hmm. There's not a single thing I subscribe to that ain't went up. And so as I re-enter this market to start releasing music again, I'm left in the, the dilemma of I got to raise prices. Yeah. I got to raise prices, but it fucking pisses me off. Yep. Because to me, I don't like raising prices because everybody else raising prices. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know what I mean? I like, I've always felt like my price is my price. You know how there's people in the music industry and you ask them how much something costs and they be like, what's your budget? Yep, yep. I've how never much been willing to pay. How much you willing to pay? What you got over there? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been one of those what's your budget people I've always been one of those my price is my price I don't care who the fuck you are I don't care what you got going on I don't even want to care about your pockets what you got this is what I this is what I feel my shit is worth and I'm going to charge that yep. it's different now and now I feel almost like I'm in a situation where it's like an arms race to keep up with the price changes. The inflation is kicking everybody's ass. The dollar ain't worth what it used to be. And we're releasing music in a situation where just everything it takes to release and put out music has now went up. So what do we do as artists? Mm -hmm. You continue to charge the same price. You're going to be in a losing position. You know what I mean? Very quickly. We don't need any more artists out here losing money releasing music. Yeah, that's not a smart business move. So if if all your expenses go up and you keep your prices the same, that's just not smart business, music or otherwise. Yeah, man. It's not. You'll you'll and it, it just leads to this this downward spiral. You know what I mean? And I think we've talked about it on here on a podcast before, is like, you know. Music, unlike most other industries, is just kind of in a race to the bottom as far as price goes. Right. Every year since the mid mid 2000s, technology has come and pushed the price down lower and lower and lower on what we do. Streaming is kind of the culmination of that. But it's like price is always going down. Everybody wants to sell it for cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. As opposed to other industries where they're just like. More expensive. Mm hmm. Like I read a story the other day about how fucking uh, uh, California passed this law for twenty dollar minimum wage, and now for the first time they got eighteen dollar Big Macs. Who's is about to pay eighteen dollars for a Big Mac because now the workers is making twenty dollars an hour? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Rem wow. Remember when Big Mac when you could get a whole combo meal for two ninety nine? What? Yep. Yep. The good yep. old days. I remember those days. The good old days. <laughs> Three dollars. You, know, so you could you could you could feed you and your homie for ten bucks. On, you, you know what I'm saying? Supersize that job for X dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Straight up. <laughs> we live in a different time right now, man. Yeah. But ain't nobody else scared to raise their prices. But artists are. Artists are. I know I'm not the only motherfucker who feel this way. We want our shows cheap as possible. We want our merch as cheap as possible. We want people to be able to experience us without all these barriers. But you, you I don't know if it's sustainable. It's not. It's not. You know, so this episode, we're going to talk about why artists struggle to raise their prices. And if you if you struggle with this, like I've struggled with this over the last few weeks, you know, really in the last this week since I picked up my my next release, the vinyl. And I've been thinking about, oh, what am I going to sell this for? And I'm looking at, I'm just like, I don't know if this is going to work at the price I was doing it before. <laughs> <laughs> might have to raise on these shows. Yeah, might have to go a little something. This thing, I don't know. I, I don't know, Chief. You know, so uh, these are things. We got like seven bullet points, man, of things that you should be considering. And, and this might be why you are struggling to raise your prices uh, with the idea of raising your prices to what? will actually work for you and your business and your art long term. And the first reason artists struggle to raise their prices is they don't research their peers. To me, this one is the first thing you should do if you're having any 
any, you know, uh, reservations about raising your prices. First thing you should be doing is saying, look, I don't want to charge that. I, but let me just go see what everybody else is doing. You know, like, what are they selling it for? What are they selling it for? You should be checking out people who are larger than you. You should be checking out people who have a smaller profile than you. And check out people who have the same profile as you, same number of followers, same, you know what I mean? You're in the same stage of your career as them. And um, write down the numbers. See what everybody else is doing. You know, look at everything from their packaging to their artwork, you know, to uh, how they're shipping it out that you can find out. Go to their stores, their web stores, and really, really research what your peers are going are doing. Because I think when you, when I researched my peers, it became very clear that I could not do the same thing. Because, as I said, it's been five years since I dropped a record. Everybody else's price increases has probably been gradual over that time. Right. I'm popping up like, oh, damn, y'all charging that now? <laughs> Shock. <laughs> Got to make that jump. Yeah, but, you know, the, the first step I say if you're an artist, you know, the first thing you should do is just research your peers. Yeah. I had to do that when, um, when I dropped the Autopilot album, you know, a couple years ago because – it was my first time really putting out my own vinyl yeah. for a minute. You know what I mean? And when I saw what every, you know, I had to look and see like, okay, what should I charge for this? Because, you know, I, I, I wasn't really adept at, you know, what vinyl was, was, um, was going for. Cause I hadn't sold any. Really. Mm -hmm. And, um, I saw what Cass was charging, and I'm like, okay, do I want to charge that much? You know what I'm saying? Maybe right. I'll take $5, five dollars off. You know what I mean? Um, but that's the best way to kind of gauge, you know, what what you should charge based on what everybody else charged. Because you don't want to undercut yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you also want to make sure that you make some kind of profit. Right. Right. You know, so so – and the thing, the thing is, too, you don't know what everybody else had to pay for their vinyl. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what manufacturer they used. You don't know where they got it from because, you know, they may be able to charge that price, you know, if it's a lower price yeah. because of where they got it from and how much they got. You know, if they got 1,000 units, yep. their price per unit is going to be less than if you get 100 units. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So – Thinking about those kind of situations, you know, you got to take all that into account. You know, when you start to understand how all this stuff works, then you got to take all those things into account to, you know, kind of find your find your price, you know, find your median and find what works for you and what's going to make you at least some money. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And to add on to that, also, when you're looking at your peers, pay particular attention to the people who have a brand that is different than yours. And by that, I mean the people who have boutique type brands. There are people who have boutique brands. And although the prices went up for people like me, um, their shit was always high. Mm -hmm. You know, like like if you look at certain people, they've been selling vinyl for $100. Yep. 2018 to 2020, whatever. They never did. Nothing changed for them. They know ahead of time they're only going to sell a handful of them to a handful of people, but they make their money on that business model. Um, if, if you have cultivated that, you can do that. If right. you have not cultivated that, you're going to struggle to go to those types of pricing levels. Uh, for me, I've never ran my shit on some boutique shit. You know, um, I've always done well, but I've never been like a hundred dollars. What is this? <laughs> Only 20 copies, 50 copies. I've never done that. It may work. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's it's something yeah. I've never tried. And so um, it's something to pay attention to because make sure when you're researching your peers that you are researching your peers who are similar to you. Not just in sound, but in how they have built their brand. Right. That's number one. Number two thing to think about reason why 
artists struggle to raise their prices is they don't truly, truly understand the cost, the price of releasing music. I know I'm not the only person who who sits and does this, but I think that every artist should dead ass know how much it truly costs to ship something for them to the fan. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you buy some vinyl. Yeah, that vinyl might cost you, let's say, seven fifty a record or something like that. Ten dollars a record. So you got it for ten dollars a pop, right? You can't just look at all of your costs, base your price on that ten dollars a record you paid for it. Chances are you had shipping to get that vinyl to you. Chances are you had taxes to get that vinyl. Chances are your packaging is going to cost you a dollar per unit, if not more, just for the boxes. OK, chances are you need some padding to go inside those boxes so the shit don't show up all warped and fucked up. You look at all of that shit. Look at all of it. Sometimes you got a, a, a digital download card in there. You could easily be looking at fifteen dollars. Yeah. <laughs> For a fucking record. And the Lord forbid your shipping estimates is off. Right. You could be losing an extra two, three dollars per unit just on a shipping miscalculation because you weighed the record before you put it in the box. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm just going to weigh this vinyl by itself. It's only, oh, 0.99 pound. You put it in the box, throw the pads on it, put the label on it, throw this tape on it. Now it's 1.2 pounds. It's mm -hmm. in a whole different category. For the post office, but you you charging your fans based on that just under one pound thing. You losing four dollars every joint. Yeah, that's easily how now that record is twenty dollars. It's not that that record is fucking yeah. You making the you you only making a percentage of that shipping back on a on the sale, and then here you are charging twenty five. Mm -hmm. You losing bread. Yeah. It can get ugly, but my advice to everyone is to really sit down and look at the true cost of what it costs you to release the music, to get it from point to point, because to get it and to get it from point to point, everything involved in it. Because I think if you know that number, you will feel a lot better about whatever charge or whatever price you attach to your product. Yeah, it's 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 difficult sometimes because especially like with you having a web store, the way that your shipping works is probably a lot more different than somebody that uses straight Bandcamp. Yeah. One of the things about Bandcamp that I dislike, which is why I want to make the move to my own web store, is that you can only set one price for shipping. Damn. So like per, you know, per country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm shipping something to California or I'm shipping something to Cleveland, it's the, same. the price is going to be the same. Damn. The, the, so you have to kind of understand what those prices are and put yourself somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Because if I'm shipping to Cleveland, it's going to cost me about a dollar less, yeah. you know, a dollar or two less than it's going to cost me to ship to California. Mm -hmm. So I got to put it somewhere in the middle where, yeah, when I ship to Cleveland, I might be making an extra dollar or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when I ship to California, I might be losing an extra dollar or two. So, you know, you got to place it in a place where it balances out. And the same with shipping overseas. Yeah. Shipping overseas is a whole nother animal. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, when you're you got to also take into account the platform that you're using. Yes. You know, to um, to calculate these things. Yeah. Because you need to know what your cost is, but you also need to know how that platform works when it involves shipping, when it involves tax, <sighs> all of that other stuff. Yeah. And to add on to that. You just remind me of you also got to consider what the platform charges you to sell on that platform. Yep. Yep. A lot of us aren't thinking about that. So next thing you know, you got this $10 piece of vinyl. When you take out their percentage, you take out all your costs, you take out the shipping gap you got. A lot of people are not really making no bread on it. Yeah. You in the red. Yeah. You in the red. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the fucking red, you know, you're like, damn, how come I ain't make the money? I suppose because it's more expensive than you think. And if you don't know that you're going to charge a price that works at face value, 
Mm-hmm. But when you really look at the true cost, like you're saying, you ship here, you lose a couple of dollars. Ship there, you gain a couple of dollars. Well, what if you got a release that the majority of people order it from a place where you lose two dollars every time you do it on shipping? Yep. yep. <laughs> it's cool if it balances out. Like Cali and Cleveland is equal. What happens if a lot of Cleveland fools order it? You lose mm-hmm. two dollars every time you ship that out. You know what I mean? Or you gain it. It's like it's it's tricky. Mm-hmm. And so uh yeah, the true cost of doing business is something that, like, if you don't understand it, you're going to be very, very, very hesitant about raising your prices to what they should be. And uh, that is something that is easy to do, but you have to be really objective and really honest with yourself. None of us want to. We don't put out music with the thought of I'm just going to tax our fans. Yeah, we don't want to price gouge cats. <laughs> We want them to get the music. That's it. We just want you to yeah. have it. Yeah. We yeah. we want to make money because we've invested so much into it, but we don't look at it like, oh, I'm about to hit a lick <laughs> on these right, fools. Right, about to, yeah, right. I'm about to rob these fools real quick. It ain't like that. It's like, nah, we just want to make just enough to where we know we got our bread back and we profitable. Yep, we don't want to yep. feel like we, we taking advantage of nobody. But what ends up happening is that because we don't want to have any discussions about the true cost, we end up being taken advantage of. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know until, you know, mm-hmm. the end of the day, when you're looking at, you know, those balance sheets <laughs> yeah. and you like, why, why am I in the red? Like, yeah. this is a, and, I, and I'm almost sold out. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like, I'm almost sold out and I'm still in the red because you didn't calculate that packing tape that you had to buy. <laughs> right, right. You had you know to buy 30 rolls of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? Those bo- yeah, those boxes that that bubble wrap. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like all of that stuff. You know, shrink wrapping the records or shrink wrapping the CDs if you don't get them done at the plant where you get them from. Like all of that stuff costs money, and all of that should go into your calculation of pricing. Absolutely, absolutely. Well said. Well said. Uh, let me see how many we got. You know, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Where? This is your weekly reminder that we have two books that you, as a listener or watcher of this podcast, need to absolutely own. The first is The 10 Traits of Successful Hip Hop Artists, and the second is The Social Media Cheat Code. Both of these books were released within the last year. The 10 Traits of Successful Hip Hop Artists is a book where I go through the stories and explain the traits that uh, are behind the success of some of the biggest names in hip hop today. Um, The book has got nothing but amazing feedback. And if you are an artist, business person, whatever you do, if you would like to be inspired and would like to learn more about hip hop along the way and also see some some reinforcement of the concepts that we talk about on this podcast, the 10 traits of successful hip hop is for you. Second book is the social media cheat code. That is for everyone who listens to this podcast who does not uh, consider themselves an expert or really good at social media. It's not for super experienced people. It's actually for people who are on social media, but are not getting the results you need. So what we did is I broke down like 12 or 13 strategies that I use all the time that actually work really well for me. I put it into book. I gave you examples and I tell you how to implement it. That's a book you absolutely need as a listener to this podcast, watcher this podcast. If you're on YouTube, supporting these books actually goes a long way towards supporting the podcast. So uh, to support the show, if you like what we do, obviously we don't necessarily get paid to do this shit. So support the products and services that we create. And these two books are a big part of that. We appreciate your support and uh, back to the show. What's up, everybody? Got some big news to share with you all today. I'm proud to announce that for the first time, I will be opening up my artist coaching and consulting services to the public. I have been doing it for several years behind the scenes, helping artists and small businesses achieve their goals, but it's never been something that I made publicly available nor anything that I promoted until now. So if you're an artist or a small business owner, I'm now available to be booked for one-on-one sessions designed to help you achieve your goals as quickly and as efficiently as possible. If this is something that you're interested in, email me at superdutytoughwork at waitlist.net. Tell me a little bit about yourself and we'll get the ball rolling from there. I look forward to working with you all. Peace.
All right, folks, we back. Super Duty Tough Work, Blueprint and Logic. We're talking about why artists struggle to raise their prices. If you are an artist struggling with this, you've been putting out music in the last couple of years, dealing with this inflation and the raising of prices and everything you do, then you probably can relate to this. You know, you might not have vocalized it, but it's there. And if you ain't noticed it, you're going you're gonna to hit this thing pretty soon because it's affecting, affecting everybody. And so... The number three reason artists struggle to raise prices is lack of confidence. Mm. This is a deep one. This is a deep one. Lack of confidence. Lack of confidence is some shit where like, you know, we talk about like the abundance mentality, scarcity mentality. We've had episodes about that. But the lack of confidence thing is like you don't believe in yourself and your art enough to know that you are worthy of the price that you want to charge. This is wild because it, you never directly think that I'm not worthy mm -hmm. of this. Some people right. go their whole lives with a lack of confidence about their art and it comes out in passive aggressive ways like self-sabotage or they never charge their friends or their people who always want to give stuff away, even though they lose money because it makes them, they think that they look so, you know, great because they're giving stuff away. But anybody who knows like, yo, why are you giving that away? People will buy that. Like it's no, they, people want to pay you or take, take their money. It's the lack of confidence that does that to, to a lot of artists. And that lack of confidence will just have you sitting there charging the bare minimum for something that took you a lot of time and a lot of resources to make because you don't truly, truly believe that you deserve the reward that comes along with charging more. And you, and you just, and you don't know your fan base that well. Yep. And we got you know, that. that. We got goes, that on here too. Yep. Yep. So like, you know, the confidence thing, you just don't think, okay, if I do raise this 10 more dollars, are they going to buy it? Yeah. You know, even though I need to. <laughs> yeah. You know, even though I need to financially, even though I need to raise it 10 more dollars, do my fans like my music enough? Mm -hmm. Are they really they gonna pay rocking that? with me? Are yeah, they, are they really, really? Because, I mean, on some real, I think we talked about this um, a couple years ago when shipping went up. Mm-hmm. And everybody had to raise their shipping prices because yep. the post office was taxing a little <laughs> more. Yep. Yeah, you know, and and even in that time, like I got some, you know, um, emails from some fans that noticed that shipping went up and I just had to let them know, like, look, you know, post office charging me more. So unfortunately, <laughs> I got to I gotta, pass it down to you. Yeah, I got to pass that down to you. It trickles <laughs> down. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you still hopefully you still want the product. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I got to I got to make that move. I can't you know, I can't lose that money. Yeah. Just because I want to be nice to my fans. Ah. And I have to have enough confidence in my music, you know, and in my ability and in the fact that the stuff I'm making is dope enough where cats will pay the extra five, ten bucks. Yeah. And maybe that just comes with experience, right? Like you've yeah. been experienced enough and been through enough cycles to where, where it's maybe a lesser experienced artist, they don't have the confidence to, mm -hmm. to do it. So you see them, they the main ones charging the least for their product. Right. Right, you and then wonder why they ain't making no money. They yeah. complaining. They complaining about not making no money. <laughs> right, like, and even the worst thing they do is they don't make no product for lack of confidence. Mm. Now that's yeah. a whole nother level of like lack of confidence, where you don't even believe in yourself enough to put your money up. Like I'm gonna get this back, period, at any price. Mm -hmm. So you don't even invest in that level, and it's worse when you're like, okay, you got fans. And you still are doubtful. Like, are they really rocking with me? Yeah. It can really happen. It can really happen. And sometimes, you know, you don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, you just, nah, I don't, I mean, it's, nah, I can't be charging that much, man. You be looking at other people charging, man, why are they charging so much? Yeah. How, how are they charging how? so much? <laughs> Who's paying for this? <laughs> <laughs> people really paying that yeah. oh hell no nah. that's not right you be judgmental 
Mm-hmm. But the truth is that if you were confident enough to charge it, you could probably get it. Yeah. You could get it. But the lack of confidence is big, you know. Um, but yeah, that's number three. Lack of confidence. The number four reason. Artists struggle to raise their prices. And this is what I'm just calling psychological barriers. And I'll explain this like this. There was a, a period of time where I was like studying like uh, swing trading, right? And in swing trading, you have these things that traders refer to as psychological barriers. They're price barriers. And so a price barrier is kind of like when price hits that number, people start acting weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a minute. This this price can dance around from 15 to 15 or to 19.99 all day and everybody trading and having fun doing what they do. But the moment it goes to 14.99, the moment it goes to $20 and 1 cent, everybody panics. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a numeric barrier. Same thing that you see in pricing for major stores. You never see nothing priced $10. $20, $25, $5. It's always $478, $362, $999, $899. Why? Because they've determined over time that there's psychological barriers that are attached to certain numbers. Yeah. $10 is a psychological barrier. People got to really think if they're going to spend that 10 20 is another one. Yep. If you if you can't break and then and, and and just like it is in swing trading, typically once it breaks that barrier, it runs. Yep. <laughs> so it doesn't go from twenty from nineteen ninety nine to twenty dollars and one cents. Once it breaks that twenty dollar barrier, it runs a fucking thirty dollars. Yep. And that's what we're looking at with music, and this is what has been fucking me up: is this the psychological barrier of twenty dollars? Yep. Versus thirty, it's a huge leap in my mind. Yeah. Because it didn't just go to $20 and it didn't go to 25 It just went straight to 30 And I'm sitting there like, yo, that's a lot. People got to think about that. When you go to the ATM, if you know this costs that much, how does that impact what you take out? Yep. Mm-hmm. When we was going to ATMs before shows, we'd take out $20 or $40. Mm-hmm. 40 was like, look, man, 20 for me, 20 for merch. <laughs> Or get me a little CD or a shirt. Now, raising my prices impacts that. Right, 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 right. And I know that it's going to have an impact on people. And so I've been struggling with that. Like my my barriers as, uh, you know, are, are attached to numbers. $20. And you know how it is, like. The whole once you break a twenty, that shit gone type shit. Yep, exactly. Yep, <laughs> you don't yep. want to break it. Yep, you know what I'm saying. If anything costs, oh, man, it costs how much for that vinyl? Forty? Oh no, nah, nah. I ain't never spent no forty. We say that we still got hundreds and thousands of fucking records. Mm-hmm. Sure do. And we might spend forty on a record if it got r- some real shit on it that we really fucking want. Yeah, if we really, really want it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just getting I'm just getting to the point where I spend, you know, twenty is yeah. twenty has always been a stretch for me for a single record. Psychological barrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yours. Yours always, is twenty dollars. Yeah. It's always been like yeah. you know, it was hard for me, you know, because for a long time we you know, dollar bin. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Dollar bin. And for for years, the first time when I first started making records, the most I would spend on a record was like six bucks. Mm-hmm. Five dollars because you bury it in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, slowly but surely, like, okay, seven. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Good. This joint is only nine. All right, I'll, 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 I'll get it because I really want it. I got to listen to it. Got some dope stuff on it. You know. And then, as I started to learn records, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then, you know, it's like, okay, this is this joint is fifteen, but. You know, this is Bob James and Earl Clue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I gotta, get, yeah, I gotta go get. You know, yeah. I gotta go in. You know what I mean? So yeah, those psychological barriers are so so real with everything. <laughs> yeah, man. And so, if knowing that we go through that, just digging, I have no doubt the fans go through that exact same thing. Like, yeah, damn, because a ten dollar CD is just an easy sale. Easy, easy. You ain't got to think about that. 
Yeah, especially at a show. Yeah, after you rock it, no brainer. Easy sale. You can get a easy CD sale. and you can get a drink. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That person ain't got to choose between. I don't like the scenario where people got to choose between my music and other mm-hmm. shit. I yep, want people yep. to be able to get everything. I went to the show. I could afford to get in. I could afford to get in. I bought the CD for a quick 10. I got a drink for another 10. It's a good night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. $30. Man. But what happens when the prices go up, people got to choose. Like, look, I'm either drinking or I'm buying that vinyl. Yeah, CD is 15 now. Right, you know right. I, mean? I can't get that. <laughs> the CD that went up, I might as well get the vinyl. You know what I mean? If right. I'm spending it, then fuck the CDs. Like, but you just, you, the fear is that we move less product, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's number uh, number four, psychological barriers. Number five reason artists struggle with raising their prices is guilt, guilt, <laughs> guilt. Yeah. If you care about your fans. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is the thing about having the kind of fan bases we got. We done shook hands and engaged and met our fans and talk to them at the tables and we be knowing them by first name sometimes in a lot of cities. Hey, what up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you again, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, we done crashed on their couches and shit like that. It's like, you be feeling bad about raising prices, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you click, hey, tech, that's my man. I can't make him pay. Hey, to the prices, I look, man, I'm only going to charge you 15, though. It's, it's 20, <laughs> 15 on the low. Just give me, just give me 10. We <laughs> cutting the little side deals and shows and shit. This is my yeah. man. Look, just take it. Yo, yeah. print, I want the vinyl. All I got is $13. Man. Just take it. That's all you got. Just give yep. me take it. Go, go, go. Don't tell nobody. Done that many a times. <laughs> Done that many a times. You good, man. Yeah. For real? Oh, you man, I only, I only got 17 <laughs> Oh, it costs 20 I only got 17 I got to go. Let me go get, get $3 for my boy. Nah, you good, man. Just take it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because the guilt will kill us. Yeah. You know what I mean? The guilt of just like taxing people who we know support us and allow us to 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 live this lifestyle is something that if you are the kind of artist we are now, a lot of artists don't deal with this because they don't deal with their fans as closely and as intimately as we do. Mm-hmm. And so for those guys, the price is just the price. Right. They don't think about True. the effect of that. <laughs> they don't even set the price. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> They getting a percentage of that anyway. You That's know what I mean? Fact. Like they That's have they have no control and no <laughs> care about <laughs> barriers or nothing. None of this list matters to them. Nah, nah. They're like, well, how much we charging that again? I don't know. Just pay me my money at the end of the year. Yep. Just give me well, it'll be in my settlement statement. They don't care. Yep. Yeah, guys like us, we be really hemming and hawing over this. Like, damn, I feel guilty about raising my prices. But you look at it, it's just a trickle down effect. Like we talk about all the prices. Okay, you go to this venue. A, a lot of venues have things where they'll actually charge you for selling merch there. Mm-hmm. So when we would go into those venues, if I was on bigger tours where the venue took a percentage, we would have to raise our prices anyway in those venues. Yeah, just so you could break whatever you was <laughs> normally charging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and so, uh, you know, but there's always been a guilt about it. And I think the guilt for us is that we know our fans. We know what kind of fans we have. We kind of know what financial tax bracket they in. You know, we know if we got rich fans or not so rich fans, we know w- what they are capable of because we're there firsthand. But what we also have to understand is that like, yo, our fans want to see us win. Right. And so we may be beating ourselves up about guilt, but the truth is that like, yo, they don't necessarily see it that way. Right. To them, it's probably just, I got it or I don't. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of whether a Logic's record is worthy of buying, whether right. Blueprint's record is at the right price. It's more like, do I got it right now? Yes, get it. No, I'm not. And we over there like, damn, I really got to go up $5. They're not even mm-hmm. tripping like that. It's not, you know what I mean? Right. Like They don't have the guilt. Like, I don't think they feel guilty. Like, the guys who we've been like, look, man, you only got 17, take this. They not going home feeling guilty about playing that record. Right. We right, be beating right. ourselves up about going up $3 on the record. Man, I had to charge them $23. Cause they... mm. It's just, yeah. like, we, we shouldn't have so much guilt about it. But that's just, I guess, the nature of what we do, you know? 
Yeah, I think I think it comes down to the fact, like you said, like we kind of know our fans. We know, you know, a lot of them are dealing with the same shit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, prices are going up on us. You know, so we have to raise prices, but prices are going up on them and all the other shit that they got to, yeah. you know what I'm saying, got to deal with in life. So we understand that most of our fans are just, just you know, just regular fucking people. Yeah, yeah. You know, regular everyday people with nine to fives that's just trying to freaking survive, you know, out here in these streets. And music is a luxury. And, you know, we know that they like our music and we know that them spending that $20 that twenty five dollars, that thirty dollars, is something that they could put towards something else. Yes, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yep. them getting our music is is extra. That's a real. You know what I mean. So when when it comes down to that, I think that's why sometimes the guilt can you know creep in because we know mm-hmm. that our fans are just regular people that got you know bills just like we do. You know, <laughs> that's a fact. So yeah, that's number five. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Quick announcement. Over the last several years, we've been asked many times by the listeners of this show if we would ever open it up to the public for advertising. We've always been interested in this, but we never had the systems in place to make it work properly. I'm proud to announce that we are officially accepting advertising from the public on Super Duty Tough Work. Meaning, if you're a small business owner or an artist and you'd like to create more awareness about your product, service or release on the super duty tough work podcast we're now in a position to do that for more information email us at super duty tough work at weightless.net again that's super duty tough work at weightless.net email us there tell us a little bit about who you are what you would like to promote and we'll get back to you as soon as possible to let you know if we think it's a good fit and what the next steps are thank you for your time Back to the show. Are you an artist who has the talent to succeed, but has a hard time executing? Do you have the will to win, but lack the plan? Are you tired of having great ideas that never come to fruition or starting new projects, but never finishing them? If you answered yes to any of these questions, reach out to me at superdutytoughwork at weightless.net to book a one-on-one coaching call. Tell me a little bit about who you are, what you're trying to do, and I'll see if I can be of service to you. Have a great day. All right, folks, we back. Super Duty Tough Work, Blueprint, Logic. Talking about why artists struggle to increase their prices. Ah, it's so real, man. It's so real, you know. Uh, we thank y'all for listening. Everybody out there, you know, your boys keep dropping this as we get back into doing more music, dropping more music. Obviously, the frequency of the shows should pick up more. But uh, here we go. Last two bullet points of the night. Word. Number six reason artists struggle to increase their prices is because they underestimate their real fans. This is a big one. All of us don't really know this until we start selling stuff ourselves directly. Mm -hmm. When you start selling directly to fans, you stop seeing it as like, you see it as like this monolith. Everybody, everybody's here in the middle, a $10 CD, is the price for everybody and everybody's comfortable with that. No one thinks differently, but you don't realize your fan base is full of people who will buy a CD at 10. It's also filled with, with like maybe 10%, 15% of people who will pay fucking $20 for that same CD. If you charged it. Yeah. And those people are willing to pay more for it because they understand the relationship between your survival as an artist and their willingness to pay you for your product. Yep. Some fans don't, they don't see the connection. They don't care. Some people do, but there's always a small percentage of your fans, true fans who will buy anything to buy anything at any price. And they know that supporting you keeps you going. Yep. When we fail to under, 
we fail to, to, to take this into account, we, we start having these issues with raising our prices because in our minds, we think everything has to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everything was never for everybody. If anything, you know, this whole new direct to fair things it has taught us about tiered pricing. We right. always start doing different pre-order packages. This is to satisfy all levels of our fans. From the casual fan who just want the free download to the hardcore fan who want the vinyl signed with the lyric sheet and the instrumentals and a yep. t-shirt and is willing to pay a hundred plus dollars for that. Yep. They're all fans. They come to shows, they stand right next to each other and sing along. The words is right along with each other. But sometimes in our mind, we think that everybody is the same because the product is priced the same or we just sell the same thing. But we don't know until we do something that allows people to exercise their real fandom, mm -hmm. like charge more. And so I say that to say like some, some of us are feeling a feeling of guilt, shame, psychological barriers, lack of confidence, all these, you know what I'm saying? Because we truly underestimate our true fans. Yeah, we don't understand the people that support us and why they support us in the first place. You know, most people, like most of us have fans that are hardcore, that yeah. have been rocking with us for years yes. because we've been doing this for so long. Those cats that bought Unforeseen Shadows. Yep. That just bought transition, they'll pay, they'll pay twenty dollars for the CD. Yes, if I set the price at twenty dollars without blinking an eye, because they want to have whatever Illogic puts out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Same way, like just watching Aesop, for example, with his new record, and he had the special vinyl that lit up and all that stuff. Yeah, like that joint was like eighty or ninety bucks. Yeah, yeah, but it sold out within like two days. Yes, you know what I'm saying, like. Cats are going to, if you if you have those fans and you understand your fan base and you understand what people will do for you and what kind of support you have, there's no, there's no, there's no barriers. There's no hesitation. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I'm going to set this at this price because I know I have at least a hundred fans. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That will pay this price. Yep. You know, it's all about understanding your fan base and really, you know, seeing seeing the the people that that support you yeah yeah i agree i agree and and it's something that maybe you don't really quite understand at the beginning of your journey you know if you're a, a newer artist a younger artist um you're maybe into your first second release you're still kind of getting to know who your fans are um yeah. but i promise you that the longer you go the more you will understand your fans and the more you will understand that wait a minute like there are people out there who really support beyond the the casual fan level of support, which may be pay to get into a show, ten dollar CD, whatever the cheapest mm -hmm. thing on the table is. There are people who want that extra experience, right? Who, who want a deeper experience with you, and because of that, you have to take them into account, just like you take into account the people on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, you know. Um, and doing that means that sometimes you need to create things that are at a higher price level. Yep. Um, but you won't understand that if you don't understand your real fans. Right. There are things you can do as an artist to see what the fuck is out there. You know, like the 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 name your price thing was always a great thing for that. Because name your price showed you who was who. How many people was yeah. going to pay the minimum? How many people is going to pay the price? How many people is going to pay more than the price? Yep. yep. You, you want to understand your fan base? Try that a few times. <laughs> yep. It'll, t it'll teach you a lot. Yeah. It'll, and, and the thing is with Bandcamp too, which I thought always thought was cool, is that you can set a price and then you can allow them to pay more. Yes. You know what I mean? So having that option on everything, mm -hmm. like you can see, like I've had, I've had cats, you know, where shit was priced for $30. I've had cats pay me a hundred bucks. See, you know what I'm saying? Like, and seeing those, then for those cats, I throw a little extra in the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, in the package, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. A little, yeah, you couple might get an extra, extra, you extra might, CD yeah, a couple stickers, an extra <laughs> CD, you know, a couple posters, you know, <laughs> but, but just seeing that, like you can see, you know, if that happens often, 
yeah. you know, and cats pay more than what you're asking, then, you know, you have a fan base out there that are willing to, you know, pay whatever you say and, you know, even give you more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And well said. Last bullet point of the night. Last reason why artists struggle to increase their prices is because they don't know why people buy music when they don't have to in the first place. We did a whole episode on this a few weeks yep. back. People and, and one of the things, you know, we talked about all the reasons that people who don't have to buy music still buy music. You know, it could be causes, it could be you, it could be whatever. Your mood, it, it, there's so many reasons. But one thing we did not talk about in there is price. And that's because price is rarely the inspiration for these people. Yep. Anybody who's buying music in an era where they can get the shit for free and listen to it for free in general is not tripping about price. Right. We work ourselves up about price because we know our fans and we know the condition and part of being an artist should require that we are in touch, that we are the pulse of the people that we are, you know what I'm saying? We are boots on the ground and, and we know these people who we are writing songs for and about and summarizing this thing that they relate to so much. Right. We, we walk among them. We are them. Right. And so, but at the same time, we got to understand that these people want to support us. And yeah, exactly. Price is not typically the reason they don't support us. Right. Of course, that is extreme levels. Sure. But most people want to support us. And the reasons people buy music now in this era where they don't have to are very many and ain't, and very rarely is it the price. Yep. Money ain't got really much to do with why people buy music anymore because they ain't got to buy it. Yeah, exactly. And so for those of you who are uh, having doubts about that, this episode, and please go back and listen to that episode about why people still buy music when they don't have to. And you should hopefully have a better understanding of like people and what you should be doing as an artist to create these scenarios where people want to support you when they technically don't have to, to get your music. Facts. Yeah. Unless you got something to add to that, sir. Nah, okay. I don't. Well said. You know what I'm saying? Thank, thank you. My nice, man. nice and buttoned up. You know what I mean? <laughs> get out of here on that note. You know what I mean? Tie it up with a bow. Yeah. And that's it for this week, folks. Let me read these back. Why artists struggle to raise their prices. Reason number one, they don't research their peers. Reason number two, no true cost or price studies. Number three, lack of confidence. Reason number four, psychological barriers of price. Number five, guilt. Number six, underestimating the true fans. And number seven, not knowing why people buy music when they don't have to. If you are like me and you are struggling with this thing, I hope this, I hope this music, this uh, episode has helped you because uh, it's real. And I don't I don't knock any artist for tripping on this issue because I never thought I would trip on it. But I never thought I would have a gap where things change so much mm -hmm. in between albums. And so, uh, you know, obviously, those of you are listening. Yes. Blueprint will be releasing music soon again. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's already bought it and paid for it. So the shit coming out, you know, delays now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give my money back. <laughs> Man's had to pay up front. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> gotta get my money back so yeah it's dropping and so uh you know that's it for this week and i will see y'all next week peace peace thank you for listening to super duty tough work subscribe to the podcast on itunes follow the podcast on soundcloud that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work. <laughs>